Hearing your love
Hey, what's up, United Movement? We have a beach day scheduled for this coming Monday. Uh, it's going to be between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. We're going to be meeting up at the 13th Street Ocean City Volleyball Courts. So if you want a luxurious tan like me, meet us there and you can be luxurious like I. I'm working on mine. I need to be more luxurious, all right? We don't really have any programming that day. We're just hanging out, chilling. So bring a beach chair, a beach blanket, some suntan, lotion, or whatever that is. Uh, bring some friends, some spending money if you want to, uh, some cold, refreshing drinks, uh, and some snacks, all that type of good stuff. A modest swimsuit for men and ladies, all right, all right chill. Uh, and we'll be hanging out just all day from like 1 to 4. Pickup is at uh, 4, drop off is at 1 p.m. All the information is in the link included in the bio as well as in the email. If you got any questions, shoot me an email, reach out to me. I'll see you then. Hey. Oh, tell me the, the best thing that you did on quarantine. We, in the Zooms, we talked about this before, but a lot has happened since then. Tell me, like, the best thing that you've done. What was the best thing about quarantine? Sleep. Sleep. All right, cool. Got one sleep. You just agreed with that. Okay. That was a year. My bad. My bad. Best thing. Yes, go. You did not have to show up to... Yo, somebody told me that um, online school is harder. It is. It is. Throw your hand up. You say it is harder. Everybody else, who says it's easy? Hands down. Put up and you like, yo, it's easy. Smarties. I see y'all. See, you put your hand up two times, Melissa. I saw you. That's cheating. You can't. You got you, got you got you got the man down, so you're good to go. You're good to go. Tell me the worst thing about quarantine. Worst thing overall. And not seeing your friends, but you think. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, worst thing about quarantine. Worst thing. Oh, everybody enjoyed it. Yes, go. Getting tired of the dog. But you, you brought that dog out on Zoom, so you, you lying. I'm leaving. Yes. You can't eat out? Yeah, I know. Who misses eating out, man? Yo, oh, man. It's like those little small things. Yo, I heard that McDonald's is pulling all, like, you gotta have tables next to each other. They're pulling out, like, every other table. It's gonna look like mad weird at McDonald's, man. It's gonna look mad weird at McDonald's. What's up, Jenny? I gained a little weight. Gained a little weight? Was that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, at least a bad thing. I, can, I can't see. I can tell if that was up and down. I don't have my glasses on. I don't have my glasses on. Sweet, man. Yo, question, question, question. How many of you all would say that, like, your rate of complaining has gone, like, through the roof? Sure. Throw your hand up. You're like, yo, I feel like I just started complaining. A little scattering. Two hands up here. That counts for that group right there. A little bit here. Y'all good? Y'all good? Way in the back. And you're too far back, you know. Tell me what's the thing that you've complained about the most. What thing have you complained about the most? Come on, call you because you moved your head. What thing have you complained about the most? Eating at restaurants. You, you don't know? You don't know. Boom, sister. Then you complained about the most with that mouthful of granola. What's the one thing that you complained about the most? You're like, by far, like. On a scale of one to a million, I complain about this the most. Nothing to complain. Look at you. Y'all are just like saints. Don't be trying to get egg night to your church. Go, Jamie. Then you complain about the most. People driving with their masks by themselves. He <laughs> Is that awkward? <laughs> yeah, but windows rolled up, driving with. Did they have gloves on when they were driving? Yeah. Gloves, <laughs> egg mask, hazmat suit. Right, all, all, all the above. Over here. What's the one thing that you complained about the most? You put your head down, I'm calling you. Boom. Exactly. I'm looking at you. Yes. Being hungry. You're always hungry, though. So I don't even know. That, that has nothing. Don't play that on Corona. Don't play that on Corona. Yes. 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 So she said when they were the restrictions were at their height, people were doing the exact opposite, and that made you complain. What were you feeling like when people were like, they were like, hey, stay six feet away, and the person was like, yes, so can you smell our breath? What, what, what did that make you feel like? You're like, it's, it's ruining it for everyone. You're like, yo, it's going to make it take longer. Let's say no corona whatsoever. Let's forget that about that part. What thing do you complain the most about? You find yourself like, ooh, this thing ha You put your hand up way too fast. Go. Your what? Your father? You can't complain about your dad after Father's Day? Ho, ho, ho. When did you get your father for Father's Day? 
That sounds cheap because you put the price next to it. So, so tell me one thing that you complain about the most regardless. The cane crew. What one thing you're like, yo, I don't care if it's Corona, no Corona, I complain about this. This is my top. Say it again. Who? Moving. You're like, yo, hey, yo, I hate moving too. Moving is the worst. Packing up, you have to pack up to unpack. The worst. You had that football up. Go. Who? Who? Cause you eat all the, you eat up all the food. Exactly. Yeah, but say it's, it's, it's a. And yo, y'all left too many, way too many hot dogs out there too. So make sure that y'all fix that. Make sure that y'all fix it. I'll probably say, yo, my top thing I think which I've been complaining about is just. Same thing, like people just don't know how to act in this with this corona environment, man. People, people they, they just like all over, like I said, but you have the people that like are completely restriction, restriction, restrictions, and then you have the other people, like you said, but some people are like extra. Go, Melissa. Ooh, ooh, because now everybody's in the house, so all you can do is complain about the person next to you. So listen, listen, you know what that made me actually think about? Um, I remember being on, um, I went on vacation one time like with my parents and I was like a kid, like I don't know, I was, I was a kid. Uh, but we went to Disney World, right? Is that the, is Disney World the one in Florida? Yeah. Disney World, so we went to Disney World and in my mind, I had never been to Disney World before. I had only been like Great Adventure, Dorney Park, stuff like that. So I'm thinking it's gonna be like, yeah, like rides. I mean, I got down there, it was, we drove too, cause my dad was like, we're not flying, we're not spending all that money, blah, 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 being cheap. So we drove 24 hours down. Got down there, we get there, and it's just like, oh, it's a small world and Mickey Mouse and da, da 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 And I was like, I remember, yo, I re literally remember being in the little room that we stayed in. It was my, my parents' room was right on the other side. And I was like, yo, I hate this vacation. This is the worst vacation ever. You know, my parents almost went broke putting the taking us down all the way down to Florida to go to Disney World. And literally, in my mind now, I can think about it now. If they heard me on the other side of the wall, they probably did. They probably were thinking like, bro, I just took you to the happiest place on earth and you are complaining and you said this is the worst vacation ever have you ever been like that where you've been like complaining about stuff that like maybe you shouldn't be complaining about give me an example give me an example where you could complain about something that later on you were like that was that was OD. that was that was just too much well what's, what's something where you was like yo like that i should not be complaining about that i did complain about it but maybe i shouldn't have angel Cause you got so much hair now, I saw right through the hair. You're looking like a grown man, but go, go. What's something that you complain about, but later on you're like, dang, like I probably was doing too much. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Bryson, cause I caught you off guard too. What's something that you complain about, but you're like, yo, maybe I shouldn't be complaining about that. I just, I just do, but you know what I mean? I, I was doing too much. Y'all struggling city. Spence is gonna help him out. He didn't even know I was gonna call on you. Big Spence. Ooh. I, I'm gonna clap you up on that. Ooh. Road rage. You got a sweet vehicle too over there. Look at that big. Ooh. Ah, that blue. Yeah, the blue haze right there. So he said he gets road rage because people don't know how to drive right. Right? Yo, what it made me think about um, in the Bible is two things. One thing is uh, when the Israelites left out of ex. Uh, made the exodus out of Egypt, right? So God delivered them out of Egypt. Remember, if you do or you don't know the story, um, God sent the plagues. Um, they crossed the Red Sea, parted the sea for them, and closed back up over the Egyptians. Like, it was like miracle on top of miracle, like template. Like, it's crazy. Like, all type of wild stuff, right? They get through the Red Sea. They're walking through. And guess what the Israelite, hold on, and mind you, before that, they were slaves for 400 years to the Egyptians, slaves, 400 years. They, so they get through the plagues, they get through the Red Sea, and then they get in the wilderness and they're getting taken to the promise. And God's like, I promise you a land flowing with milk and honey. That was actually a good thing. So they were, they're, they're on the way through, and guess what the Israelites started doing? This is the worst trip ever. Literally, they said this. I wish I could just go back to Egypt. Because they had this garlic. Oh, you remember them garlic knots? Oh, mm, so good. Literally, they started saying, yo, Moses, why did you let take us out of here? We should have just, you could have, if we were, you were going to take us out here to die, we could have just stayed back there and been slaves. They were just going to go back for a trip. 
they were going to go back to be a slave. So literally, the same thing that we're talking about that we do that we complain about, the same way like you complain about, you're like, yo, man, this thing, da 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 But you got that smooth blue haze over there, man. That thing is, that thing is smooth, man. We can switch cars right now if you want to. We can, we, we can switch. But, but literally, that, that complaining piece just keeps going on. So, yo, it's a book um, that's called A Relationship um, IQ, right? Um, and, and so in this book, what it talks about is it talks about complaining. And when it's talking about complaining in particular, it actually says that in our brains, there's a mechanism that the more that we complain, the more we want to complain. So the more we complain, the more we're predisposed to complaining. Is that weird? Is that, have you ever gotten that thing with somebody, you just, you've been talking to somebody about something, you're like, yeah, 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 they corny, yeah, yeah, them little dumb shoes that they got on, yeah, yo, he got a dumb hat, too, and that yellow, yo, that yellow and that black does not, yo, you just start complaining, and complaining, and complaining, and complaining, and complaining, so listen, I, I don't bring that up to say, to kind of beat us up, like, oh, well, you're just saying we should stop complaining, so I'll just stop complaining, because how many of you know, that's kind of like, impossible to do right it's kind of impossible to do so but I, I what I want to just focus in on is to how can we reframe how can we shift our thinking like how can we retrain our brain because some of us have just been trained to complain right how many of you would say like I, I'm, a, I'm a complainer I know it I do it how many of you are lying here uh, one in the back thank you hey I'll give it up for you let's give it up for her the one person telling the truth yo some of us are like professional complainers like you can get on a complaining kick and you just keep going and going and going. So listen, what I just want to bring up real fast is in, in uh, the book of Philippians, um, the apostle Paul, uh, again, great man, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but Paul, yo, uh, he, he saw the light, he converted over to believing in Jesus, right? And so after this, this dude like went through all this drama, if you all saw some of this series during quarantine, uh, we actually talked about some of these things, yo, he got shipwrecked. He was beaten. He got snake bit. He was he was on an island. He was it was it was crazy stuff happened to him. His whole goal in life, after becoming a Christian, was to go to Rome so he could preach the gospel and tell people about Christ. He thought he's like, yo, if I can go to Rome. So just to put that in context, it's just like America is the superpower of the world. Rome was the superpower of the world. So if somebody was not from America, um, and they said, yo, man, if I can go to America, I can impact the entire world. Because guess what? One of the primary languages that everybody wants to speak is what? English. So in the same way, he's like, oh, if I go to Rome, they, you know, the word can get passed out. So he's like, all right, boom, that's my goal. But the way he got to his goal didn't exactly work out that way. So again, I'll skip past the whole story. I'll get right to the end and say, yo, so he he's at this point, um, again, after he got shipwrecked and snake bit, all this crazy stuff happened to him, he gets to Rome. Yay! Except he's in chains. He's a prisoner. Yo, he's a he's literally like a straight up prisoner. Like almost like death row type prisoner. So he's a prisoner and he's chained to this guard 24-7. It's not like he got his own room, his own cell, little TV cable, three hots in the cop. Like nah. He's literally chained next to this dude all day, all night. He's sitting there, dude sitting here. Eight hours goes past, new, next shift, click, 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 click. Click, click. Like it's a, it's a full deal. So if anybody could have complained, he's like, yo, it's cold. He didn't do anything to get here. He just wants to preach the gospel. He's stuck, right? He's stuck. So let me just give you all this one little section here. This is in um, Philippians chapter 2. I don't have my glasses on, so y'all got to help me out here. Um, uh, chapter 2, verses 14. So remind you, he's in. He's locked up 24-7. He's stuck with this, uh, this guard here. And this is what he says. And I'll just read this 12 to 14. Therefore, my dear friends, he's writing a letter to this church in Philippi. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now how much more in my actions, because he's locked up. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you it, excuse me, to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. My glasses, my glasses, my glasses. In verse 14, this is the primary verse that we're going to focus in on. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Is that impossible? Because you know, he didn't say do some things without grumbling or arguing. He said do what? Everything. everything. 
Now again, he's saying this locked up to a dude who he's next to. The reason I think he was able to say that is because he reframed it. Again, he can be like, yo, I'm stuck here with this dude, and this dude stank a little bit, he got a little smell, it's not me. It is him, I can tell, it's him, it's a person, because every time they switch off, it's him, and I smell that smell when he get here. He can be thinking about that. He said, guess what he begin to say? I believe he said, you know what? This dude thinks I'm chained to him, but guess what? He's chained to me. So what he began doing is telling this, these officers and these guards every day about Christ. Every day about Christ. And you know Jesus. Da, 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 da. And they're like, could you stop? Well, I mean, you got to be here with me, right? And then I'm going to keep on going. And Jesus. Da, 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 da. So guess what he did? He reframed it. How would it be for us if we reframe things? Even in a bad situation. What would that be like for you? Scale of one to ten. How hard would that be? One is easy. Ten is extremely hard. Five. Five. Okay. Five. Why five? That's right. But see, like, I could go either way. It depends on the day. If it's a bad day. It could be problematic. How many of you would say it's very? It would be very tough for you to do. Because he said in everything. You scratch your head. So I'm going to take that as a yes. She like, mm-hmm. It would be. It would be. How many of you say, yo, it's just easy, like easy. So she gave a five. Ooh, girl. somebody hit her right there. That was a. She said easy. Would it be hard? I know. I think it would be hard too. So look again. What we were talking about is. The complaining, we talk about complaining how it rewires our brain. We need to retrain our brain. But look, guys, this is the main thing. We need to control what we can control. And we're going to be done. But we need to control what we can control. There are so many things right now. Again, we can't control the school thing. Some of y'all graduated. Who graduated this? Uh, just graduated. Put your hand up if you just graduated. You either graduated from sixth grade or you gra or eighth grade or you graduated from 12th grade. Hold up. Give it up, 12th grade. Eighth grade over here. I see it. Guess what? How many of you all had a graduation? You had a graduation? What? Y'all actually went to your graduation? It was online. Oh, it was a, it was a parade. You had an online graduation, right? But guess what? You couldn't control that. When the year started, y'all were thinking like, yeah, let me see who I'm invite. How many tickets can I have? I'm be mad if they only give me three tickets because I got to invite my mom, my dad, my grandma. I mean, not that grandma, but my other grandma. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we have to control what we control. As humans, guess what we don't like? We don't like not having control. So guess what Paul teaches us right there? He's like, bro, you can control something. And the one thing he couldn't, he couldn't control his body. He couldn't control uh, what was happening to him. But guess what he could control? What he focused in on. What he focused in on. So listen, man, I just want to encourage us. Retrain that brain. Focus. And there are so many things right now we can't control. Control. There's all this racial unrest on top of you. Like, yo, I don't know what's going on out here. There's all this COVID stuff. I don't know what's going on out here. Even smaller stuff like, how do sports work? I was who I was talking to. I was talking. Yeah, I was talking to Captain Jack. I'm like, yo. So how do y'all do? Tell me how some of these rules for, for uh, uh, baseball right now, bro. Tell me these rules. What, what they said you can and can't do. How things work. Go. No catcher in baseball. And the umpire is going to have to stand behind the pitcher's man when they typically stand behind and they get the, the calls wrong already. So how they going to get them wrong for like 15, 16 feet away? How they going to get them right? Like, does that sound crazy? Like, you can't control that. You can't control. What's something else that you're, that you're considering like moving forward for this upcoming year that you're like, yo, I don't know how that's going to work. NFL, he's like, he got his jersey on, he's set, but it might not be no NFL. He's he like, I'm upset about that. Yes, go. Yo, tell me how, tell me how, what, what some of the rules are saying already for me from Phil Hot. Yeah. How do you get the, y'all got to wear masks in the hot sun. Uh, uh, even stuff like, yo, I'm like, movie theaters. How do movies, how many people like going to the movies? How do y'all miss going to the movies? Not just watching Netflix. How are you supposed to go to the movies? Try, so you're like, you gotta be, what if you don't have a car? You got the blue haze right there. What if you don't have a car? You hitchhike, hitch don't hitchhike. Don't, please don't get traffic. Like, don't let it happen to you. But listen, God, listen, it is key for us to retrain our, we have to reframe. So look, that's our memory verse for this week. Again, it is, sec, it is Philippians chapter two, verses 14 says this, do everything without grumbling or arguing. Another version says, complaining. So look, I just want to encourage us this week. Think of some way. They're saying everything 
Think about that one thing that y'all said, yo, this one thing I always complain about, I know I complain about it, my parents, or it's my, or it's school, or it's this, or it's that. Like, think about that and then say, yo, how can I dial that down some? And not even how, even how can I dial it down, the, the way that he was able to reframe it was, he looked up. He stopped looking at people, and he looked at who? God. So he said, I'm gonna look at it through his lens. What does he want me to do? Because if we keep looking at what other people want us to do, guess what? The baseball thing can get fixed. They can be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you can have the, the catcher now. Boom, that's done. Guess what you're going to complain about? Man, now, okay, now the umpire's back there, but he still made a bad call. I can't stand this stupid umpire. You, so you might as well have been out there if you're going to make a bad call. Well, guess what? We can only control what we can control. And what Paul encourages us to do is stop the grumbling, stop the complaining, and focus on God. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for this time. We thank you for, for what you're doing in the lives of these students. God, we thank you so much for us to, that we can just get back together, hang out, see each other. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, yo, like we haven't been together in like months. So we thank you for that. We could be complaining and be like, ah, oh, why do I have to wear gloves and throw the thing? I don't want to have to wear the mask. It makes my glasses fall. But God, we thank you that we can just come here, even with restrictions. We thank you that we can just come here, love on you, love on each other, even though it's a little bit different and awkward. We appreciate that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.